Imagine getting paid just for sharing your thoughts on products and services you use every day. With Survey Junkie, it's that simple. Click on the link in the video description to discover how you can start earning today by taking surveys. Welcome to Reality Check, where we dive deep into all the drama and chaos from this week's Summer House episode. Stay tuned as we break down the certified loverboy's antics and spill all the tea on the relationships and secrets unfolding in the beach house. Let's get real about all the gossip, twists and turns on this reality TV roller coaster. One thing that has struck me about Carl and Lindsay's romance from best friends to being engaged is the emphasis from them both that their years-long best friendship has set them up for success. They spent the past summer arguing with their friends over why their relationship is not just a good idea, but the most natural progression of their friendship. In last week's episode, we saw Lindsay repeat in a confessional what so many women say about their partners. He's my best friend, with so much hope she was willing it to stay true. Only when you watch Carl and Lindsay have any conversation that is remotely serious do you have to wonder what exactly their friendship was based on. Surely years of being best friends must have helped them understand the basic truths of their communication styles, but that would be asking too much of these adults in their late thirty. In continuation of the conversation Carl began having with Lindsay during their dinner last week, Carl finally explains the extent of his parents' disapproval. After a ton of build-up with Lindsay, he tells her how Lou said he would not marry them as their problems currently stand. Expecting a blow-up from Lindsay, she hits him with annoyance. She already cleared the air with his mother at her bridal shower. Can they move on? Carl, for some reason, becomes annoyed with Lindsay, which is confusing to me. He built up this conversation in such a way and didn't get the blowout he feared. Perhaps he's embarrassed because it wasn't that big of a deal. It's hard not to feel as though Carl is banking on how disliked Lindsay is for her frequent blow-ups and using that to justify ending their best friends to lovers rom-com plot relationship. By the time their non-conversation ends, dinner is over and Lindsay recounts the drama to Kira, Paige, and Amanda. Listen, I've spent many seasons being a Lindsay hater, and nothing has been more instrumental in humanizing her in my eyes than watching her open up to these girlies who were once her enemies. Seeing her vulnerability and, to me, undeserved understanding of why Carl took so long to tell her the extent of his parents' concern while also making it seem like a big deal shows a more generous side of Lindsay that I have been enjoying all season. Then it's time for their group activity, a tarot card reading Gabby has lined up. Often when I watch this show, as someone who is in their early thirty, I cannot believe the level of group activities these people can tolerate. Yes, it's so that we don't just see Paige and Amanda in bed all day or on their phones. Still, it provided a moment of tenderness for Jesse Solomon, who is facing yet another secret to the group cancer scare, and was told by the tarot card reader he needed to open up more about his pain. Everyone is impressed by this tarot card reader's accuracy. Somehow not a single person brings up that there is a high chance she could have watched even just one episode of this show and given the correct insight to all of them. Carl and Kyle enjoy a cigar by the pool alone as the night winds down. Carl is shattered by the conversation with his parents because he knows it is true. He doesn't explicitly say that, of course. But the way he says, I'm so fucked, to Kyle carries the same level of sadness as the meme of Tim Robinson going, I don't even want to be here anymore, and I think you should leave. After some prodding from Kyle, we finally get a moment of true honesty from Carl, who admits things are pretty bad. The next morning, the gang wakes up and some go off for their workouts and coffee, before lounging by the pool. Carl is the last to arrive home that morning. Kyle tells the rest he stayed back at Barry's boot camp to talk to a dude who's big in the non-alcoholic drink space. Okay, so a guy who is into normal drinks got it. As someone who does not drink, I do not understand the obsession with non-alcoholic drinks becoming a space. Are you telling me I should be spending the same amount of money as an alcoholic beverage on a non-alcoholic one 
because it tastes kind of like an alcoholic drink, this just dosin'. 